going to be my last video here for a while. I'm going on a summer retreat and the purpose of it is I, I've been doing a lot, you know, making so many videos and doing all the indexing and organizing and whatever and I want to concentrate on being for a while <laughs> rather than doing. Uh, because doing, of course, is external, and being is within. So, I'll tell you about it later, <laughs> when I come back out of it. But before I go, I want to share with you an extraordinary, wonderful, beautiful email about Mother. This was sent to me by one of our viewers who shall remain anonymous for reasons that will soon become obvious. <laughs> he says, I'd like to get initiated in Mahasodashi by you if possible. What's the procedure? Well, if you're already initiated in Siddhi Mantra and you have your Atma Bija, and the only procedure is to email me and ask me for it. <laughs> it's easy enough. And, you know, watch the series on Mahashodashi Mantra. Um, not a big requirement, but you'd be surprised how, how lazy and <laughs> how cheating people are. They want to chant the mantra anyway, even without initiation or without instructions. But of course, they wind up doing it wrong and not getting as much benefit as they could. But then he goes on. I feel very ready and well qualified. I consumed peyote as a sacrament, which led to a whole inner drama. At the end of it, a goddess revealed herself who was the most loving, protective presence ever. She had many forms. One of them had to do with playing peekaboo. I learned that she was me and the whole universe was the tiniest sliver of what she can do. Wow. <laughs> cool. So, you know, um, I made a series of videos about entheogenic enlightenment. I myself had my first enlightenment experience on an acid trip back in 1967. And because I had no background to understand it, I suppressed the memory for a long time. But it was what it was, and it followed me around. <laughs> I couldn't shake it, and it eventually brought me to where I am today. So it's definitely possible to use entheogens as aids to enlightenment. The problem is most people without background will misuse them. Although at the time I took that acid trip, I was very much engaged in spiritual matters already. Most people are taking them for fun, huh? so-called fun, which I don't know how much fun it is. <laughs> I guess it can be fun, uh, but it can also turn into a bad trip if you don't have the proper set and setting. So that's a whole thing that I don't want to get into right now, but basically you have to be coming from a sacred place to unlock the secret potential of entheogens to reveal the spiritual world. Now, what about that spiritual world? Well, back in the Lakshmi Tantra series, uh, Lakshmi reveals that there's a pure creation and an impure creation. 
And obviously, right now, we are residing in the impure creation. I mean, just look at the daily news, right? <laughs> so pathetic that human beings who are capable of so much and such a sacred kind of being are entangled in so much nonsense. It's just incredible. So anyway, he passes on the realization, which is so wonderful, that this material universe is only a tiny sliver of what Ma is creating and, and what she has within her. What does that mean? Well, she is consciousness, fundamentally, and its objects which means she is consciousness and being. So these are the two most fundamental things, consciousness and being. When consciousness begins to take itself as its own object, this is the beginning of being. And eventually, consciousness splits into subject and object or actually awareness, I should say, splits into subject and object, and then you have consciousness. And the object is the creation. That is the goddess, Shakti. The awareness, the pure awareness is Shiva, and its objects are Shakti. So what about those objects? Is this material universe everything? Heck no, not by a long shot. <laughs> Even though it appears boundaryless, it's still finite. Why do I say that? Because it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Everything in this world is in time. And time means past, present, and future, beginning, middle, and end. So she is all of that. But beyond that, she is the pure creation where there is no influence of time. There is no beginning, middle, and end. There's only pure existence, uncreated and unending. How do we know this? Well, <laughs> one, she reveals it in the scriptures. And two, you can experience it by entheogens or even more permanently by meditation. See, the problem with a trip is that it also has a beginning and an end. But while it's happening, your vision is tremendously expanded. And because you're so open, she will reveal so much to you, as she has to this viewer, that this material universe is only the tiniest fraction of her full creation. So what's the rest? the pure creation, the spiritual worlds. And you get a hint of this when you go to sleep at night and dream. How many uncountable living entities are there just on this planet? Huh? So many, and yet all of them go to sleep and dream. Huh? You've seen it, like a cat or dog taking a nap and, and they're like they're running or they're, you know, doing something, moving around in the dream. So they also dream. And even lower life forms also dream. So she is creating the dreams of all these, you know, infinite number of living beings. It's no problem for her. So she can also create the dream that we experience in the pure creation when we get promoted, when we become enlightened, when we become pure and sinless, then we can go into the pure creation. And what do we experience there? Well, <laughs> it depends on our dream. It depends on our ideal uh, body, our ideal relationship with God or goddess, and our ideal mood and pastimes. So, we all get to experience our fondest dreams that are so pleasing and so satisfying that we could 
stay in them forever. Huh? Ordinary dreams aren't so good. Ordinary dreams aren't perfect. Ordinary dreams are a product of our karma. You know, very small, trivial karmas that we don't need to experience in the body. We can just experience in the dream and, and it's finished. But when we leave this body in a state of self-realization, we go to the spiritual world or the pure creation and then we live a dream that we have created by our devotion, by our devotional service, our karma yoga and bhakti yoga. So this is what she's talking about. She's talking about that this material world is just a tiny sliver of what I've created. The spiritual world, the, the pure creation, is really the bulk of it because she has a, a separate world for each and every enlightened being. Now this goes on. She comes from this place of emptiness that's like the sound between notes. And she's like a space that can never be filled. There's mathematical equations expressing this. She told me, I'm just borrowing the whole thing from her, my body and my so-called self, that I'd return to the earth and be with her. That there was absolutely nothing to fear. She has everybody's back. And as a form, she protects everything. She's all wealth, all the good and the bad. God and the devil would be a small part of her. A joke. So this whole material creation of duality, good and bad, right and wrong, up and down, <laughs> light and darkness, huh? this is just a joke to her. And this confirms what we were just studying in the Shastra, that she says, this whole creation is my sport. Uh, Leela is the Sanskrit word. Leela means a play. It's not serious. It's like when kids get together and play house or railroad or space pilot or whatever kids play these days. <laughs> that this whole world is just her Leela. Don't take it serious. It's not real. It's a kind of a dream that we all share. The dreams that we have at night are individual, but the dream of waking consciousness, Jagrat, is a shared dream and we're all actors in that dream. But it's still a dream. It's not the reality. Why is it not reality? Because it has a beginning and an end. This body, for example, it's born at a certain date, continues for a while, and then it's finished. Why should we be attached to it? Huh? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. It's true. So we shouldn't become so attached. We shouldn't become so identified with this dream that we take it for the reality and we get all serious about it. <laughs> it's really not worth involving yourself. huh? It's worth cultivating detachment and setting up a situation where you can remain detached for long enough to investigate your being. Now, I'm not recommending that everyone go out and try to score some peyote. <laughs> Although I have to say, of all the drugs or entheogens I've experienced, mescaline in any of its forms is like the king. Huh? It's heavenly. You feel like God. Huh? So of course, in that state, Ma is gonna reveal herself to you because you have the right mentality for her to trust you and be intimate with you because you've shed the ego and you're wide open to experience. And so 
This is what I'm going to be doing. You can, you can attain this same state by meditation, especially by entering meditation while you're still coming out of the dream state and then doing lucid dreaming or going into the dream state at night. So I'm going to be doing a lot of this over my retreat for the next, I don't know how long, until I feel like doing again. <laughs> so until then, be well, be safe, and do some sadhana, do some study. Make your life sublime. Aung Tatsan. Aung Shakti Aung.